It's been a few weeks since I did the unboxing video, so I thought today it might be a good time to take another look at the Blue Vivo 5. I've been using this device as my daily driver, as I said, for the last few weeks now, and I'm gonna go ahead and start things off right. This has not been a terrible experience. Let's just take it point by point. Taking a look at the design, it is very solid. It is very well built. I love the metal exterior. I like the way that it feels in the hand, although it is a little bit slick. I will say I have dropped it just a few times. But even with that, that's about the worst of the damage you can see from just a couple of drops and scrapes and scuffs. The screen didn't take any damage. The back didn't take any damage. Everything else has been just fine about it. But I will say, if you do have slick hands, if you think you're gonna drop it, they did include a silicone case. So that does allay a lot of the issues. Although I will say that silicone case, I have not been able to actually use micro SD or the three and a half millimeter headphone jack with that case. So just keep that in mind if you decide to use that case. As far as the performance, it is rocking that MediaTek OctaCore processor and it has not been an issue. I'm not going to say that it's the fastest thing on the market. It obviously is not, but it is decent. I have seen it slow down from time to time, especially on heavier games. As far as gameplay, it's been a bit of a mixed bag. The majority of it has played very nicely. There are some games like Turbo Dismount, as you can see here, where certain levels can get just a little bit laggy. See there how it's just kind of dropping frames and kind of lagging a little bit. And if you change levels and then come back to it, this one level in particular, at the very least, you see how slow and sort of stuttery that is. Not saying it's gonna be perfect on every other device, but this sort of does show how it would perform. And in terms of just the benchmarking performance in general, I have done an Antutu benchmark on this. Comes in at right at around 39K, which is sort of on the lower end of things at this point, but not terrible. It does have three gigs of RAM built in, which should help a lot with keeping a lot of apps open and running in the background. Moving on down to the sound, and on down literally, as it were. The speaker on this device is at the bottom, and it's only one speaker, it's right here. Now, I was actually pleasantly surprised with just how loud this speaker gets. It's just a bit unfortunate that it's so small and there's only one of them. As a bit of an example, I've got my own video playing here on YouTube. Let me go ahead and turn it all the way up. You can hear how loud that is. It's really loud. And I'm able to block most of it out with just my thumb. You can see that. So again, very loud speaker, very easy to put your hand over it. Speaking of the sound though, I normally don't end up talking about this much because I normally don't use phones for making phone calls, but I did use this a few times over the last week because I've had jury duty and I do have to call every day for that. And I found that making and receiving phone calls on this, the actual call quality was crystal clear. One of the clearest sounding that I have ever used. So props to that, if that's your thing. As for the display, this camera is not gonna show it off as well as it probably should. It's a 720p display, which for a phone of this price is not bad. It's bright. As you can see, I've only got it turned up halfway there. I can turn it up all the way, put it all the way at its brightest setting. That's about as bright as it goes. And that's about as dim as it goes. I like to keep it right there about in the middle. But as you can see, the text is clear, it's sharp. It's flickering because of the camera, but it looks good. If you get an ultra super close, you're probably gonna be able to see pixels. But again, it's 720p. So 720p on a five and a half inch device, you're gonna have really low pixel density. But still, for my eyes, it's not been bad at all. I think we're actually getting a little ahead of ourselves with all these 2K and 4K displays. 720 is, it's not the best, but it's also not terrible. As far as the battery life, 3,150 milliamp hour battery in this. So I had absolutely no issues making it through an entire day. I think the lowest I ever saw this go. And that's when I'd used this for streaming YouTube for several hours. At the end of the day, I was at about 30, 35% battery maybe, maybe 31. Now the other side of that is this does have USB type C. So if you're on the go and you don't have a USB type C cable on you, you're gonna be out of luck. Additionally, it does not really support fast charging, like the more obvious Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0 or 3.0 standards. It has fast charging, but that's fast charging meaning two amp charging. So it charges at a relatively reasonable rate, but it's not super, super fast. Moving on to the storage, 32 gigs of built-in storage has been more than enough for me for the time being. It came with about 25 gigs of usable space, if I remember correctly, and I think I'm down to like 15 gigs of usable at this point. And at the request of a viewer, I actually did do a quick test on the internal memory speeds using this app called A1SD Bench. And you can see right there, internal memory, 155 megabytes per second read, 81 megabytes per second write, which is pretty reasonable as far as I'm concerned. And you do also have that micro SD card slot option. You just pop out your SIM tray. One of them you can have a micro SIM, the other one you can have a nano SIM or a micro SD card. And I did test it out. I was able to move apps, at least certain apps, 
from the internal storage to the micro SD card, no problems. There were a few things connectivity, wireless type wise, I wanted to go ahead and talk about. I've been using this on the AT&T network. I'm specifically a Cricut user, so I do have throttled AT&T network and it works just fine on AT&T. 4G LTE, wherever I go, pretty much. It comes with bands two, four, and seven, which means that it's missing band 12 and band 17 that the Vivo XL has. Meaning if you live in an area where you rely upon band 12, and I heard this an awful lot from people when I was doing the review of the OnePlus X, this is not going to work on band 12, at least from what I've read. It does not have 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. I don't think I would expect it at this price point, but I thought I would just go ahead and mention that again. And the weird thing was, I noticed the Wi-Fi on this is extraordinarily slow. My home Wi-Fi connection, no problems. On any other phone, I can download at multiple megabytes per second. On this one, I'm normally sitting at around 20 to 40 kilobytes per second, which is horribly painfully slow. And when I disable the Wi-Fi, it immediately jumps up to several megabytes per second. Well, at least one megabyte per second, since like I said, I'm throttled on AT&T. But one megabyte per second is eight megabits per second. That's what I'm throttled to. That's what I get on this. Until I turn on Wi-Fi and then I'm back down to next to nothing. So that may be a bug, I don't know. Moving on to the camera, because I love to focus on cameras. See what I did there? In good lighting, this thing does pretty well. As you would expect, in good lighting, it's gonna do all right gets pretty grainy in low lighting, and the front-facing camera, don't even worry about it, it's grainy all the time. It's just gonna be grainy. However, the built-in camera app does have some interesting modes to it. It has a built-in professional mode, which is kind of a manual focus mode, manual shutter speed, white balance, ISO. You don't normally see that on a budget device, so very nice to see that. Of course, you've got HDR, but you've also got magic focus. I've got an image that I did very quickly with that here, where basically you pick a point and then everything else is out of focus. And then you've also got a built-in barcode scanner and a I'm not even gonna say the word. I say GIF, I know a lot of people say GIF, and I genuinely don't care. Or in this case, I genuinely don't care if you pronounce it GIF or GIF. But it does have an animated image creator. It'll make them for you in 640 by 480. I did do one of those as well when it was snowing out the other day. So I thought that was kind of a cool feature. As far as the video, because that's what I do, 1080p 30 rear facing video, it does okay. I'm not gonna say that it's great. Again, just like the photos, good lighting, it does all right. Not so good lighting, it's grainy, and it's slow shutter speed, and it's not usable. 720p 30 frames a second on the front facing camera and again just like the front facing camera photos it's grainy, it's shutter speed is slow, it's just not great. There was a bit of a weird bug. I use Snapchat a lot. There'll be an image at the end you can see if you want to follow me on Snapchat cool. A lot of times when I was in lower lighting conditions if I was using Snapchat the preview of myself would be one brightness setting and then as soon as I would start to do video it would go super super dark. Not sure what's causing that. Again maybe just a bug, maybe a software glitch. Who knows? Speaking of software though, this comes running Android 5.1. I'm really not sure when 6.0 is gonna arrive. I've asked and I have not heard back from Blue. I've asked Blue several things at this point and actually haven't heard much back yet. There's not an app drawer built in. You can put a new launcher on for that. That's perfectly fine. It's not a big deal. The swipe down for notification stuff and swipe up for getting to all the rest of your stuff, that takes some getting used to, but I, I, I got used to it pretty quickly. Now I did have a bit of an issue. Timely does not work appropriately. Timely is the app that I use for all of my alarms. I use it literally every day. As you can see, 7 a.m. on weekday mornings, it's supposed to go off every single time. It was supposed to go off at 7 a.m. It went off at 7.04 a.m. And just to give you a bit of a sample here, 1.43 p.m. it's supposed to go off. Right now it is 1.42 p.m. So it's supposed to go off in less than one minute. So we'll just sit here and wait. And while I'm waiting for this, let me go ahead and just say the built-in alarm clock, the built-in clock app, perfectly on time, every time. So if you do end up picking up this phone, don't expect Timely to work, at least not on time. Set your alarms four minutes ahead, I guess. But if you wanna use the built-in clock, it works just fine. Oh, by the way, 1.43 p.m., 1.43 p.m., no alarm going off at the moment. We'll come back to it in about four minutes. Also, and I don't normally mention this, but I thought I would here, I tried to use an external microphone. This is the Rode VideoMic Me. Works fine with a lot of phones, does not work with the Blue Vivo 5. So if you wanted to use an external mic of some sort with it, this type is not going to work. I don't know if it would work with just a headset, but if I had to guess, probably not. So to go ahead and wrap this up while I'm waiting for this alarm to finally go off here in about two minutes, what do I think of this device? This device is regularly available on Amazon for about $200. And for that, I'd say you're getting a pretty decent value for the money. The camera's not the best, the performance is not the best, but it's solidly built. It comes with some nice accessories in terms of the case and the screen protector. They are promising a software update. We'll just have to keep an eye out to see if it actually happens. But there are some software bugs and glitchiness in the device, so just bear that in mind. And I think that's going to be about all for me for today. Let me know what you think about this device if there's anything that I missed down in the comment section below. Make sure to leave me a thumbs up below this video if you liked it, and subscribe to receive all of my videos when they become available, and we will see you again next time. It finally went off, a grand total of 10 minutes late. Make that 11 minutes, 143 to 154. Yeah, there's a problem.